Are you looking to undertake a residential development project, but you're unsure about the car turning circle and parking requirements? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna share everything that you need to know about parking and turning circle requirements to help you get up to speed and heading in the right direction. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Peter Kelly here from Little Fish Property Developments, helping you maximize the value of your land and generate wealth through low risk residential development projects. We share everything you need to deliver successful projects time and time again. So if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notifications on so you don't miss a thing. When undertaking a townhouse development project, such as a dual occupancy, it's no secret that there's many moving parts and variables that need to be considered as the property developer. It's a risky game and unfortunately it can be challenging to find the good information, particularly around some of the nuances such as parking, access and car turning circle requirements. It can sometimes feel like you need to mess it all up and get the lesson because it's challenging to find information that you can trust either way. It can be like finding a needle in a haystack. A simple Google search will clearly show you the lack of readily available and easy to consume information. For the most part, there are four scenarios that you need to consider when looking at the parking on a proposed residential property development site. First up is the standard scenario. The standard scenario is the best and most common kind of access as it might be a side-by-side -side or a front-to-back development. A side-by-side -side in most instances would mean driving forwards towards the property into your garage, carport or open car space and then leaving by reversing out from your driveway and onto the road. These options are very straightforward and the most risk-free of all the vehicle access designs. The second scenario is when you are close to an intersection. There are minimum requirements when proposing a new vehicle crossover close to an intersection. This is of course for safety, so the vehicle accessing the road can do so safely without negatively impacting the motorists passing by. When you are faced with this, it probably means it would be best to engage a traffic engineer to assess your site and come to the final recommendation for access to and from your site. It is an investment worth making as the council will require you to do this for your planning application. The third scenario you need to be aware of is what is referred to as a road zone. Road zone category one and two roads identify the significant roads. These are major roads that are heavily utilized to provide significant transport connections and include freeways and highways. These roads are managed and controlled by Vic Roads. If your development is on a road zone, there are things that you need to be mindful of while you are designing. When proposing a new crossover for access, you need to design in a way that allows all vehicles leaving the site on that road zone to be doing so in a forward motion. So essentially having the space to provide the turning circles inside your site to leave in a forward motion. Suppose you can retain an existing crossover that currently has vehicles reversing onto a road zone. In that case, you could be able to keep the crossover and continue using it in the same manner it currently is. But again, this is subject to councils and Vic Roads approval. Scenario four is a right of way. Right of way are essentially a laneway to the rear of your property. This can be an excellent option for parking on your site. The council like them because you are not adding any crossovers to the front of the property. In some instances, you are taking away the existing crossover as you have designed the parking to the rear of the property for both new dwellings, assuming you are doing a dual occupancy development. But there are some prerequisites to be able to achieve this. You need to have the width in the block to get the required amount of parking in. And the right of way needs to have the adequate width so you can achieve achieve your turning circles in and out of those parking spots. Depending on how tight these aspects are on your site, you may need to engage a traffic engineer to assess and find a solution for you that council will approve. Now let's look at the minimum parking requirements. When designing your development site, it's super important to consider the required parking that you need to provide for each dwelling. If you underestimate this, it can have a massive impact on your design as car spots are big and they take up a lot of space on your site. The rules when it comes to to parking requirements and development projects are simple. Two bed dwellings need to supply one spot and three bedroom plus dwellings need to provide two spots. This is why in some instances, it's more feasible to do a good two bed townhouse in some designs and only provide one car spot rather than go a pokey three bed townhouse where you need to supply two car spots. That's it guys, that's a wrap. Hopefully you're getting a ton of value from these training videos. We love making them. So if you have any questions or any topics that you'd like, 
like us to tackle, please drop them in the comments below. And of course, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do and turn the bell notifications on so you don't get left behind. I'm Peter Kelly. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy developing.